So this is the A4 assembly video. And this is A4 in the book. And I made a note here that there's a modification for the English paper pieces kit. And basically all they've done is they've taken away this extra sashing and cornerstone border and made it bigger. So we're going to work from this. I numbered my triangles because they're similar in size. And when I went to um, lay out my block, I wanted to make sure that I had the right, um, the right triangles in the right locations. So I've got my block laid out. And what we're going to do is we are going to treat this like it's an on point block. So if you look at it like this, this is a row, this is a row, and this is a row. And that's how we're going to assemble it. So we'll base these three pieces and then connect them. And then we'll make the center block. And the center block is the same kind of thing. I'm going to make these into, into one unit. And then these into one unit. And connect them with this bar. Connect one to the bar and then the other to the bar. And then I'll be able to finish that row with these, uh, these uh, pentagon corners. And then this is the third row. So... For my basting, I'm going to baste the hypotenuse first of the triangles and then the legs, which makes the tags go away towards the sashing, which will take them out of the seams. For these, I'm going to baste the points first and then this side and then these edges. It will help keep the, the bulk down when it folds. And then for these triangles, I'm going to also do the hypotenuse and then the legs because then the tags will face these pentagons. For the arrow pieces, I'm going to do the short sides first. So I'm going to do the point so that it's got the sharpest edge, then this other short side, then the long sides. Same thing with here. I'll do each point and then the long sides. So the first thing to do is to make what, I'm going to start down here, I think, because that makes it easier for me to work up. So I'm going to start with these three pieces and make this into a section. So I've got this corner unit assembled. And next I am going to do this section, which means I'm going to do the center first, which then means I will make this unit next. So I will base these and attach these into one unit. So I've based it and attached this unit together and then the next thing to do would be to base and attach this piece to this piece. So I'm attaching this piece to these this unit and I'm not sure if this will translate on screen but if you put this corner where it should be, the other one on here, the other one down here is going to be, this, this purple one is going to be shorter than this. This is normal, okay? But you have to force it into submission. So what you're going to do is you're going to attach one side, you're going to attach one side lining up this this edge and then you're gonna come down to about here and tie off then you're gonna come to this side and line up this edge and then sew this way what that's gonna do is it's gonna make this pucker up a little bit the reason this happens is because right in here you've got fabric thickness you've got thickness from the black and you've got thickness from the purple on each of these slots and there's possibly some thread in there and there may just be some space because sometimes you don't pull hard enough for whatever reason but that's why it grows because this is an uncut piece of paper and this has three pieces so if you do that you'll be able to maintain these pieces where they need to be it's very important that you do this throughout all of the quilt because especially on some of them where a lot of pieces on one unit connect to an uncut piece of paper it's going to be pretty pronounced so um, I'm going to go ahead and connect this now 
Another thing I wanted to note, I had this problem on my first quilt and I didn't know about it until I went to take the papers out. If I leave this basted like it is and I go to sew this, it's going to clip up, it's going to clip this edge and sew it into this seam. So you want to make sure that this is not anywhere near this seam and this is really close too and it's real easy to get this into your stitches. So make sure that you lift this out of the way so that when it comes time to remove the papers you can get to it. Otherwise you're going to stitch it, stitch it down and then you're going to have to either cut and re-sew or you have to do what I did and trim the fabric off. So uh, just make sure that you're real careful about that one. So I've attached this piece to this unit and you can hopefully maybe see how, how it's not flat, it's dimensional. Part of the place that you can suck up some of this distance is right here in the seams. If you take a stitch from this side to this side and then this side to this side, so you're essentially making an X, but you want to pull real nice and tight if you got to have a, a, a strong thread for that. An 80 weight Orifil is not going to cut it. Um, so you want to pull here and pull here and that will help condense that growth a bit. So, um, but once the papers come out, the fabric will ease in and everything will be fine. So don't get too nervous about it being so wonky. But, um, because your block, the whole block will be wavy and that's fine. As long as the ends of the fabric are where they need to be. If you've got a point that's meeting in the middle here, you want to make sure that you force that to happen too. Sometimes I'll start in the center. But in this case, I'm going to put this here and then I'm going to baste and assemble this next unit for the center square. So I've got this other unit assembled already. And so now I'm going to attach it to this centerpiece. I'm going to do the same thing as I did with this other section. I'm going to start at the one end to make sure it's lined up and then force it into submission on the other side so that it fits properly. So I've got the two ends attached to either side of this center unit, but as you can see, it's still not stitched here. I wanted to point out that in order for this to look right, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you line up these short ones across from each other. So I'm gonna to have to make a mark, and then the next thing I am gonna to have to do is put that where it belongs, because if it's off, it won't look like an X. It will look skewed. And you, you're not going to like that. So make sure that you, the next thing you do after you attach the ends where they're supposed to go, the next thing to force into submission is this thing based on where the other one was. So you're going to do that. So I've connected the other unit to the center. And it's, it's really, you know, wonky. But that's just because we talked about the dimensionality. That's going to happen. So I'm going to... Now I'm going to attach these end pieces to make this row here and then I can attach it to this other section. So I'm going to baste and attach these pentagons. So I've attached the pentagons to the center square. So now I'm going to attach this to the other unit I make so that I can keep it straight and make sure it goes in the right spot. I'm going to do the same thing as I've been doing in the center square. I'm going to attach this one end, make sure it's lined up properly. Then go back over here and attach this end and tie off. The other thing I'm going to do after that is I'm going to make sure that this point ends up at that intersection and the same over here because it's critical that your points are precise. Make sure that you're lifting up your tags as you go so that you don't accidentally stitch them into the seam because I've already done that once today. And I'm still, and I'm aware of it and I'm still screwing it up. So, you know, just a little mental note there. So I'm going to go ahead and attach these two to each other. So I've got both of these rows connected. And the next thing to do is to baste and attach these into one unit. So I've assembled this last unit, and now I will attach it to the rest of the block. So now I attach the last corner, 
and now my A4 block has been completed.